The 1980s were years full of mysteries and legends that witnessed unforgettable scenes in world history. The United States of America, on the one hand, and the Soviet Union, on the other hand, competed in every subject imaginable, transferred their resources to these projects in order to be first, and left hundreds of legacies, many of which affect the present day. Some of them were hidden and protected, while others were left to rot in a hangar, underground or at military bases in the vast Soviet territory. Burand Space Shuttle is just one of them. Its construction started in 1986 and went into space on November 15, 1988. It is the first and last vehicle to go into space within the scope of the Buran program. It was launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome and remained in space for three hours. This project, which started in the 70s, was the most ambitious project in Soviet space history. More than 1 million people from 1,286 companies and 86 ministries and departments worked directly on the project over 18 years. The country's largest scientific and industrial centers were involved in this project. By 1992, the total cost of the project reached 16.4 billion rubles, and it could no longer hold up against the already fluctuating Soviet economy and was completely terminated in 1993. Although its appearance is very similar to the American shuttle, it is entirely of Soviet design, from its mechanics to its electronics. The Buran shuttle had higher orbital and extraorbital payload capacity, could continue flying during re-entry thanks to its two rear engines, and had more equipment. However, its most important feature was that Buran could fly in automatic mode without any pilot from takeoff to landing on the runway. At the front of the shuttle, there was an airtightly insulated cabin with a volume of 73 cubic meters. This cabin was intended for crew and passengers, onboard equipment and engines. In the middle part there were various cargo compartments for the transportation of space objects. There was a power generation unit under the load compartment. In the tail of the shuttle were the engines and machines of the hydraulic system. Various materials such as aluminum alloys and steel were used in the construction of Buran. The outer surface of the shuttle was covered with a special heat shield to resist heat during re-entry into the dense layers of the atmosphere. These shields were made of quartz diamond and could withstand temperatures up to 1,300 degrees Celsius. The tiles on the leading edge of the nose and wings, where temperatures reached 1,500 to 1,600 degrees Celsius, were made of carbon. A characteristic plasma would form during the most intense phase of heating, but at the end of the flight, the temperature of the shuttle would not exceed 160 degrees Celsius, thanks to these heat shields. The engine system was used for propulsion in space, transition or correction between various orbits, performing near-precision movements, orientation, stabilization and slowing down of the Buran shuttle on its return to Earth. The shuttle equipment consisted of more than 50 different machines, radio, TV and telemetric devices, life-sustaining systems, air conditioning, navigation, energy supply systems, etc. These would be controlled autonomously by onboard computers. The entire shuttle and the interior of the cockpit were designed to stay in orbit for 30 days. Buran's length was 35.4 meters. Its height was 16.5 meters and its wingspan was 24 meters. The wing surface was 250 square meters, the fuselage width was 5.6 meters and the ground clearance was 6.2 meters. Because of its huge size, it was not easy to transport it by road or sea. Vibrations that may occur during transportation could cause serious damage to the shuttle and a disaster could occur during the operation. So a special plane was remodified for the shuttle. Its approximate weight reached 105 tons, and its payload capacity to place into orbit was 30 tons. The weight of the propellant gases was around 14 tons. During its launch, its two engines were fired at the same time, creating a thrust power of 34,840 kilonewtons from the engines weighing 2,400 tons. This power could take the shuttle to an altitude of 150 kilometers in 476 seconds. At this altitude, the engines were separated from the shuttle. 
In its first flight, Boron reached an altitude of 250 kilometers at an angle of 51.6 degrees and its descent to Earth took 89 minutes. In case of any technical failure during the separation of the engines, the onboard computer would automatically calculate the altitude reached and ensure that the vehicle remained safely in low orbit. During its return to Earth, the shuttle made a 180-degree turn, started to slow down with the power of the main engine, and entered the landing orbit. Then, with a 180-degree turn, it positioned itself with its nose pointing down and entered the descent route, taking it out of orbit with a large angle of attack. Thanks to the shuttle's excellent aerodynamic structure, it was controlled only by orbital maneuvering systems and aerodynamic systems up to an altitude of 20 kilometers. At the same time, the orbit chosen for descent makes it possible to compensate for the approach speed of the shuttle, which was 300 to 360 km per hour at the time of descent. The required length for descent is 1100 to 1900 m. In order to improve the usage possibilities of Boron, it was planned to use three airports, one in the Cosmodrome, 5 km long, 84 m wide and the other in Asia. The development of Boron took 10 years. A decade in which important research tasks and experiments were carried out in various technical fields such as acoustics, thermodynamics, system design, flight dynamics in the simulator, control panel design, construction of new materials, development of methods and equipment for landing. This shuttle was kept in the 112th hangar of the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan for five years. During the restoration, the ceiling of the hangar collapsed. Buran 1.01, the only model of the Buran project that went into space, and the Energia launch rocket set were crushed under the roof debris. Seven restoration workers also died.